Hello, folks. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by italki, which is just a perfect service if you're looking for someone to speak English with on a regular basis. It could just be a native English speaker who you could have conversations with regularly and they can help you with your English. Or it could be a qualified teacher who will give you lessons and specific work on you know, any area of your English that you need to improve. And when you find the right teacher and you pay for some talking time, italki will send you a voucher for a free lesson because you listen to this podcast. To to get the offer, just go to teacherluke.co.uk slash talk or click an italki logo on my website. You're listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk. Hello, folks. Welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 642, and it's called The Lying Game Returns with Amber and Paul. And in this one, you can hear us playing this classic game on the podcast once again. This is actually the seventh Lying Game episode that we've had. All the others are episodes 308, 309, 317, 318, 343, and 436. And yes, I'm just, you know, recalling all those numbers just directly from my memory there, obviously. Check them out if you haven't already done so. I won't go into the rules of the game now, or will I? I might, actually. Anyway, suffice to say that essentially this game is about telling stories, and we all know the importance and usefulness of listening to stories for learning languages. So this game is a way to draw a story out of someone using questions. So basically, someone makes a statement, and here we are... Uh, explaining the rules of the game. Anyway, someone makes a statement. It's usually a, a thing that they did in the past, but it doesn't have to be. And the others have to ask questions to get all the details. And this is where the story starts to emerge until they're satisfied that the story is either true or a lie. It becomes pretty entertaining, I think, as we investigate each other's stories with varying levels of scepticism. I also use this game in class a lot as a way to practice storytelling using past tenses and question formation. And it's just a lot of fun to imagine that you're a detective like Columbo, who always has to ask one more question. So you can think of these as little stories from Amber, Paul and me. But are they true or are they lies? Listen carefully as we go through this funny conversation that might have you laughing out loud on a bus somewhere in podcast land. But try to work out if we are lying or if we're telling the truth. Focusing on that part of the game can help you pay attention more which helps you remember the language that you're hearing in the process. Check the page for this episode on the website for all the links and videos and stuff, if there are any. But for now, let's play The Lying Game again with Amber and Paul. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on the podcast. Amber and Paul are on another podcast. Paul's a very funny boy. His laugh I very much enjoy. Amber's got a lovely voice. If I could choose an accent, hers would be my choice. Yeah. Okay, so we've decided to play another lying game. Lying game. I think we need a jingle for the lying game, Luke. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, you need to create a jingle for this. With the sounds of lions roaring in the background. No. Don't go there. And Russians coming in. (laughs) As long as the lions are Russian, then... uh, Look, we've got the Russian joke in another episode again. Yes. What is the Russian joke? Please explain. <laughs> right, so we're going to do another lying game. I can't remember the last time we did this, guys. It's really probably a several, ago. probably several years ago. But anyway, we're going to come back to the old uh, formula and play the lying game. But uh, there'll be plenty of people who don't know what the lying game is because um, I get new listeners and stuff quite a lot. So, Amber, can you explain the rules? The lying game is, as far as I remember, uh, you, we each take turns to tell a story which mm-hmm. could be true or false, and the others have to ask questions and try and ascertain the truthfulness. And then we take a vote, and then all is revealed. Yeah, and, if yeah you... and it often starts with one phrase, right? It's like, da-da-da-da-da-da, this happened. I did this, yeah. yeah. Or this happened to me, and then it's up to us to drill down and ask all of the specific questions to find out all the details until we're satisfied that we believe that it's either true or a lie. And then uh, we, we cast our votes... And the truth is then revealed. And if we guess correctly, we get one point. And if we guess incorrectly, the storyteller gets one point. Yeah. And that's how it works. Okay. okay? So we've got a maximum of three points. No, <laughs> five points. Because you, you can get, you can score two points when you tell your story. 
And you can How score. Can you score two points. Because you, if you get, it wrong, get it wrong. So if I tell my story, you get it wrong, and Amber gets it wrong, I get two points. Next turn, let's say you tell your story, and I guess correctly, I get another point. That's oh, four, isn't it? And then the next, just now. <laughs> No, you can get on your story. <laughs> I got on your it. own story, I, I'm, I'm you right. get three points. No, because, yeah. no, 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 no. On your own story, you got a maximum. There's three of us, three yeah, people so in the room. There's a maximum of two points on your own story, and then a maximum of, of two points from the other two as well. So let's say I tell my story, <laughs> you both get it wrong, I get two points. You tell your story. I guess it correctly. I get one point from you. I've then got three points. Yeah. Then it's Amber's turn. She tells her story. I guess that one correctly too. I've got another point. Four points. So it's a maximum of four points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's Luke's English podcast, not Luke's maths podcast. <laughs> but then if you get four points, then we've got none. So it's four zero. Yeah, I'm just saying a maximum. A maximum of four you can points. get a maximum score of four points. <laughs> As soon as you start, any time I go, try and go into maths on this podcast, <laughs> everything just falls to pieces uh, very quickly. Okay, but I think we understand the concept. I'm going to go first on this okay. one, right? So I'll say my Luke, thing and then you it. guys can take go turns on. to ask me questions. So I saw a, um, a famous actor uh, on the roof of my building. A famous actor on the roof of your building. Mm-hmm. Well, you do live in a very posh neighbourhood where there are lots of actors. So I'm... I mean, I'm inclined initially to believe it. Yeah, exactly. And, and also, didn't lots you, of movies. You kept on banging about seeing uh, what's his name in your old neighbourhood, which is the same neighbourhood, Jarvis Cocker. Correct. Yeah, I, Cocker. Do, I used to go on about seeing Jarvis Cocker yeah, a lot. So. I haven't seen him for a while. I right? saw he him. wasn't on your roof then. You saw him. I saw him just outside the boulangerie on when? my way home a while ago. When, Obviously, I've moved to the suburbs now, that, so what, I'm not going to see Jarvis anymore. A while ago? I? How long is that exactly? That's one of those phrases that doesn't mean anything, isn't it? Oh, a while ago. Well, well mm-hmm. I mean, it's that phrase combined with my memory. It could be anywhere right. between a year and six okay. months and I yesterday. I haven't seen him for a while. All right, who is the famous person, Luke? So, he's a French actor that um, you guys will know. So, his name is uh, Romain Duris. Romain really? Duris, really? Romain Duris. Okay, so you saw I like Roman the way you're Duris. both like, genuinely impressed. Cause yeah, because you, I, you, like, I like him. I mean, I like him because he he's in my favourite French film, which is uh, L'Auberge Espagnole, which I don't know what the English... Uh, yeah, that is a good there's, film. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a Spanish something. The, yeah, the Spanish. See how, see how good my French is. Yeah, <laughs> I worked out that it. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so Roman Duris. So but I, 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 like, I like the way you're both impressed. Oh, really? Like as you assume that it's true? Then he's got that really yeah. kind of. He's so French. Only could he be considered sexy and cool in France. Got uh-huh. Such a French face. Mm. He's been in lots of movies. I like actually. He's good. Yeah. yeah Pot really luck good. is the name of the film in English. Hot luck. Pot yeah. luck. He's He's quite good at playing an asshole. He was in um, the beat that my heart skips. Le, yeah, le, le, I can't remember what it's called. In the French. battre mon cœur s'est arrêté or something, something that like that. That was a good movie. I like that. I, uh, I, I find it hard to. Um, I, I think it would be hard to explain to non-French people who Romain Duris is. There isn't like one standout film that internationally he'd be known for. Oh, no. Espagnol is that film? Yeah, yeah pot luck pot would be. Luck. The, but I mean, he he would be the equivalent of. Um, of maybe what's his name? Um, Donnie Darko, uh, Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. Mate, no, no, no. What? Not in terms of his appearance. No, I mean. but in terms of his notoriety yeah. in film and, and the types of films. Yeah. He's, but he's, you know, been he's taken. He, he was sort of unknown, and then he's done a few big films, and he's kind of disappeared for a while. Yeah, but he he's has. done some big. He has done some. Basically, he's a French film star, sort of youngish. Um, yeah, we don't care about your story. Luke. We're talking right. about Roman Juris. <laughs> yeah. Roman Juris. Okay, and so uh, you saw him on the roof. True. Were okay, they filming? Were they filming? Well, I I discovered that they were filming. What yes. do you mean you discovered? Okay, so well, when I first saw him on the roof, um, I thought, "Hello, there's someone on the roof. What's going on here?" And in fact, what what it was so, was yeah. What it was was yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's what like was it? the most amazing English. That sounds like football. A football so, manager at the end of the match. What it was was what it, yeah. What, what it was it's was. like what we was trying to do yeah is trying to kick the ball in the back of the net. Do you know the what I mean? The thing is yeah. What it was was that. So when I first <laughs> saw him, I didn't uh, I didn't realize I didn't recognize him. Uh-huh. So okay, so I was sitting upstairs. Well, it's quite high up your roof. Yeah, so this is the. Uh, Were you the... on your balcony looking up? He doesn't have a balcony anymore. You, you do. Sort I do have of. a balcony now. Yeah. Yes. Now. Yeah. Oh. You've been oh. On my yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Terrace. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, veranda, no, that's veranda, more, porch. more of a balcony. Porch. That's an actual balcony for yes. me. Yes, that is a balcony. <laughs> yeah, go on. Then. Anyway, so it's it's mm. it was in the previous flat actually, the one we used to live in. Oh, okay. So I was I was sitting in the Skypod 
where I used to do my podcasts at the desk working. Right, if you remember the Skypod, yeah. yeah, right, there was a obviously the 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 main sliding doors on the right, yeah, yeah. on the f- in front there was, was a, window a window that looked out over yeah. the city, yeah, and on the left there was a window as well which looked out over the the rooftop of the building, yeah. Okay, so I was sitting there at the desk, da 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 da, working, working, working. It was like sort of in the morning, midweek, like sort of eleven o'clock in the morning or something. Look I out. looked over to the left. Oh God, there's someone on the roof. It's and our my, jurist. And my first, my first thought was, oh, it's a homeless person because... That's fair <laughs> enough. He does have that shabby chic look. He, he looked very shabby. And also he was dressed in a kind of a sort of very shabby looking dirty coat and um, kind of clothes that looked very old. And he had a dirty face as well. And, I, and so I, my first thought was, oh, no, there's a homeless person who's got... When was the, this? Got on the roof. Was he being know, a few years, few years ago, actually. Probably about two or Why three years ago. Why did you mention it to us? I think it was sounding quite believable. And then I was like, what? You saw Roman Juris on your roof and you've never mentioned it to us. Mm, did you heard our chan- reaction when we heard Roman Juris? Yeah, I know. I just haven't had a chance to, to mention it. It just you. didn't come up in conversation. It didn't come up in any of the previous Lion games that we've done. Mm. We've not done one, to be fair, for a really long time. So, so right, you get the thing. Yeah. So I thought, oh, no, there's a homeless person on the roof because in Paris there are, you know, unfortunately lots of, you know, homeless people and uh, they are sometimes... And they often get on roofs. Well, yeah, that they, makes sense. They do find their way into <laughs> places. Like, I've had homeless people sleeping on the floor in front of the, in front of the lift in our building before. Like, some homeless yeah. guys got into the building. Yeah, but for them to get the lift to the top floor I don't know, man. get onto the roof I don't know well, you can get onto all the roofs in Paris I think that's, yeah. this is a fire safety feature is it? yeah yeah, yeah, yeah you can, because yeah. you are because if you're on the sort of fourth or fifth sixth floor in Paris apparently you have to have access to the roof there has to be in all the houseman buildings an ability to get up there so you can be rescued by the fire brigade yep so at, when I first saw him I was like oh who's this guy is he like dirt oh no there's a homeless person on the roof and the, the, the unfortunate thing is that, you know, when you come across a homeless person, usually in Paris, the instinct is just to kind of ignore them and hope that they don't bother you because you do get hassled quite a lot for money uh, yeah. in this city. So my first thought was, oh, no, this is going to be really awkward because he's going to see me and he's going to start trying to talk to me. No, he's not. He's, my, he's on a different roof. He's, he's on not the, on your no. roof. How, how do you know? You were saying the, you saw him across. No, so you got out of the of window. Building. This looks across the roof of that building. building. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, imagine like... Um, so he was just metres from you. Yeah, so the, the, the window looks across the top of mm. the, uh, the building, okay, that okay, line of it, building. So he, he was climbing across the... Um, climbing over the chimneys and walking along. And I thought, oh God, this is going to be awkward. So I kind of ignored him and hoped that he wouldn't come up to me and start talking okay, to me. Okay, so how did you find out it was a film? Um, well, I kind of, after I'd ignored him for a bit, I looked again and I saw him waving at someone on the other building. So there's a car park. Yes, uh, and, I remember the car park. People often do filming on that car park because ah. there's an amazing view of Paris. So I looked over to the car park and sure enough, there was a film crew with lights. I was like, okay, they must be filming something. But I still didn't recognize who it was. Yeah. I still thought, oh, they're just filming some guy on the roof. So I thought, okay, fine. Uh, back to work. In fact, at one point he waved at me so I looked at him and he kind of waved at me like that. And then I was like, oh God, I hope he doesn't come over. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and then, cause I'll just be like, je suis pas. <laughs> je yeah, suis pas. Yeah, exactly. That's like my life, which is basically avoiding talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and so my, my, generally I'm just like, oh no, just stick to my, you know, like, um. So when did the penny drop? So it wasn't until I went outside. So, uh, afterwards after, you know I'd been doing my work and it was lunchtime so I went downstairs to get myself a sandwich somewhere and I walked out in the street and yes there was one of those large trucks large lorries yeah. that they always have parked somewhere which is where all the filming equipment is kept yeah. and there were film crews hanging around and stuff you know film type people and uh, then I saw walking across through uh, the little square where I used to live uh, there was um uh, him again and I recognised him because his coat and the same th- you know he had the same dirty face and the coat and everything and some assistant or something were walking along and then I recognised I was like oh it's him it's, it's that actor yes and then I went and got a sandwich and did you find out what movie it was nope and so you've not watched it I've no idea what, what film it is I didn't go and speak to anyone because as I mentioned before 
my you life in Paris you don't speak to people <laughs> generally <laughs> it's, it's basically me just just uh, going from one situation oh, to another and avoiding having to talk to anyone so no I didn't go up to him oh excuse me sir can I have your autograph or what's the film uh, when can I see yeah. it no I was just like oh they're making a film go and get a sandwich <laughs> is that roof that he was on that sounds it's, quite dangerous no it, I thought it was really dangerous it's not flat at all there's one bit in the middle that you can walk on but then it slopes down on either side so it I don't felt know. pretty dangerous to me the fact that you've not mentioned it and that he was on the roof rather than a I, I don't know roof work that seems dangerous yeah dirty face I mean what was he a chimney sweep what is this <laughs> I don't know I think maybe he was you know I don't know what it, what it I've was I've not seen him in a film for a long time mm. You seen no. him in anything, Paul? No. Nope. Uh-huh. Are you sure it was Roman Juris and not his body double? Well, it could have been his body double on the roof. And that's why I, you didn't and that's why I didn't recognise him. That's possible. I've I I I did tell what other films have a you couple seen of people. In? I've only seen him in one or two. I saw him in uh, Populaire, which is about a woman who's really good at typing. Okay. Um <laughs> it was just like a really typical French film. Because it this, <laughs> this like it. it's a film about a guy who runs an office <laughs> and he meets a girl who's really good at typing and he decides to put enter her in typing competitions. It's set in the sixties, so it's all right. Yeah. And uh, and she, so he enters her in typing competitions and they sort of have a love affair. And it, it's like mm. quite a sort of sweet little film. But mm. of course, it being a French film, there has to be a sex scene where her breasts are, are shown <laughs> because I think there's like a quota right in the French in yeah. French films, it's like breasts, nipples have to be shown. In every film, yeah, you know, sure. it's like this. The, the, the script is great, Jean Pierre, but uh, can we have some more tits in it, please? <laughs> you know, like the only way to get a green light on a French film project is, you know, great, okay, but will there be tits? Yes, okay, good. There you go. Sure. There's there's your budget. <laughs> but there's, um, a of, there's a lot of breasts in Paris. Yeah, I get a... have you ever counted how many? No, but I mean, um, you know, you're just like you're waiting, and then there's a bus in front of you, and there's just some advert. And you just think, oh, were boobs necessary for uh, that toothpaste advert? I don't. Yeah, know. well, apparently they were, and uh, a lot of things like even sort of historical. Like, what's that famous image of the Liberty oh, guiding yeah, the people? Marianne. Uh, Marianne. Yeah, Marianne? she's. she's she she's she's there. It's like a image Delacroix. image from the uh, from the revolution, isn't yeah. it? From the eighteen thirty from revolution. the eighteen thirty revolution, and she's standing there, kind of like holding up the French flag. Yeah, yep. and she, yeah, she's got a boob out. Both, both. I think. It's just, just one. one. Boob. Oh, it's just one. Just, just one, one boob. boob. Just a uh, wardrobe malfunction. Bit of a, bit of a but it's Janet liberation, Jackson. isn't it? It's liberation. Yes, although that's not what caused the scandal. What caused the scandal? Well, tangent. Anyway. <laughs> She didn't. She's got a bit of a hairy underarm. Uh, well, I didn't notice that. You didn't, did you, Luke? <laughs> no. no, you were distracted <laughs> by her gleaming bosom. No. Um, so anyway, where were we? Right, so okay. I'd seen Roman Duris in this film, Populaire. I'd seen him in that okay. one, and um, so did he wave at you again when he saw you on the ground? No, because I don't think he. he you recognize the, the opposite had happened. You recognize him, and he no longer. You were no longer special. I don't know if when he was on the roof and he waved at me, I don't know if he recognised me. I don't know if it was like, oh, there's Luke from Luke's English he, Podcast. What <laughs> was he doing on the roof? Was he just gambling about? Was he was he, he doing was, a little dance? So he was climbing across the sort of, there are these sort of... Uh, How was he climbing? Was he on all fours? He, was, he, he, he had his hands on the on the chimneys and he's, he was getting his leg over where were the chimneys were. Were there safety ropes involved? There were no safety, didn't see any safety ropes. I don't know. I, don't, I think it feels too dangerous. Okay. I so, don't think Roman Juris would have risked his precious little neck to climb up on a Parisian roof. Yeah. I just feel that that's the kind of, I don't know, it feels could have been genuinely a stunt. dangerous. Could have been a stunt, And it's quite an expensive neighbourhood Yeah, where you live. Lots of movies go on there because it's really nice and really beautiful. And because but of But why the, would you use that? I mean, of course, you've got a lovely roof, all yeah. the, the views. The view. But why wouldn't you just... Green screen that. I mean, I don't know because, how much things come on, cost. Amber, yeah. The green screen would look freaking terrible. Yeah, it would. It. True, fair enough. But I mean, it does seem genuinely, it's, it's scary. It's dangerous. Mm-hmm. Climbing on a roof. It could have been a stunt, man. It could have, that could explain why I didn't You're clock. putting a little caveat in there. No, I'm not putting a caveat in there. You're saying you, you, said, you, you said you saw Roman Juris. I saw I Roman see, Juris. No, you said he's a, a French film star on a roof. It okay, okay. Not been him. as far as I'm concerned, or his, bo- or his body double in 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 inver- in brackets. Yeah. You yeah. need to put that. As far as I'm concerned, I saw a guy on the roof, and then I later was led to believe were, that it was him. But where yeah. were the cameras? Because on the car park. 
How far away is the car park? Not far, just a street because away. Because you'd want some close-up shots. Like if you were going to, yeah, but invest... you just you can just change the lens and have a you big can... zoom. It's like it's like how asking. I don't know. It's like how footballers. You know, it's like how football photographers. Mm. Uh, and football cameras mm. I've got like massive close ups but the cameras are all in the stand sure. which is about as far away from the football field okay so they could have got some nice yeah. shots even though they were far away they probably wanted like the wide shot they and then the close up shot on the roof they what? They didn't need the cameraman on the roof. No, as well. the cameraman was on the safety of the the car park, where lots of films are, are made up there because of the view. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they're made all over the whole time. Yeah, I know. But especially that in that area, I mean, just we saw I camera like, crews like up there you all the time. Could have told us about this. Yeah, maybe. I feel like this is a good story, and I would have hmm. I'd have heard about it. So, are you guys ready to make your decisions, or do you feel that like you need to drill down into this story anymore? No, are ready. you satisfied? You're ready. Okay. okay. Well, uh, Amber, then. I want to say no. You say it's not true. Not true. Why? What? Quickly, why? I feel like you'd have told me the story. Okay. Um. And it feels too dangerous for Roman jurists, <laughs> and I'm not seeing him in any he movies. He wouldn't do risk it, would he? No. <clears throat> I want to believe it's true, though. I'd be very pleased if it is, and I'll look forward to watching that movie. Okay. Paul? I'm going to say it's true. Okay. What makes you say that? What's the past form on this game that Paul never, ever wins any games in this podcast? <laughs> he wins Except this once one? that you won the, the Lion really? Game once. Yeah, in celebratory moment it was. But Paul normally... Paul has won the Lion Game consistently, hasn't no, he? No, I don't think so. Mm. I'm no, going to say yes because I've got good. an iPhone and I look some stuff up and I think it could be possible. Wait a minute, you... <gasps> what? You You've cheated. been cheating by using the internet? You've been Googling it? So you're saying it's true, are you? Yeah. Okay. Well, you've done some... You just did some research. <laughs> and there should be, should be a rule against this. There were no rules against it. Using the internet to verify... I was, I, was, I was on my phone the whole time. You didn't say anything. You I know, didn't say, oh, put it down. I, I did I see you, were, you on your phone and I thought, is he researching I this? I thought you were like, you know, uh, using TikTok or, 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 or Snapchat I mean, or whatever the kids nah, are man. doing these days. So, um, so tell us, Luke. So it is a uh, true story. Yes. Completely true. If you'd have said it was a lie, I'd have been like, all right, there's something fucked up is going on here. So what's the movie? You did the research. It, the, the, the movie is called um, Hold Your Breath in, in English. Uh, yeah, I d- someone did tell me uh, about dans, this. Dans la brume is what it's called uh, in French. Dans la and brume. I will show you... Uh, what's, what's la brume? La brume is uh, fog. Mist. Fog, smog, mist. Yeah, so here's, mist, so here's the picture of the film. The picture of the film is that Paris has got a, 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 some sort of gas going through it. Uh, Which is true. Or was it a sort of dystopian movie? Yeah, and they and and uh, and I and I uh, even in the trailer, I've got the scene that you saw. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen this. <laughs> no, already. let's have a look. So there's uh, Paul's showing us the trailer on on Do his we phone. See? We don't need the sound, Paul, because it's all going to be on français, and uh, but no yeah. one cares. Yeah, go on then. We'll describe what we can see. Yeah. So Roman Duris is walking down the street with a walkie-talkie. Something, there's the lots, fog is coming. Fog is coming down the street. He's running away. Is that your neighbourhood? No. Uh, no, but wait for it. And then there's lots of shots of him escaping into a building. He's hammering on, a, on my front door. <laughs> your actual front door. And he's let me into the apartment. And there's like a lot of stress and, and people talking into walkie-talkies. And it's basically, what are we going to do? Get out there's his, the roof. There's his coat, his homeless coat. Well, you know, we could have seen the sky pod in that shot. There, there, he, is on, there he is. There he is. It's there he on the is roof. on the roof. There he is on the roof, looking at the sacre Looking cur. at sacre cur. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Oh. So there you are, folks. So you saw Roman Juris up on that roof. Well, I, did. I wanted to believe it, and there it is. It does look like a rubbish movie. It does. I don't think I'm going to be watching it, even though I do enjoy a little concept? bit of our Juris. So uh, let's see uh, the point. It was almost too much of a. Initially, I was like, uh, all right. Because Roman Juris is a very specific actor. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's true. And also, it's a, it's a, it's a, it was um, a pretty... What? Like, you, you'd have to... It would be difficult to make that up. Yeah, it's pretty... Like, you'd have to, you'd have to, you'd have to have a, a, a really mental, like, creative thing to be like, okay, I've, I've got to, I'm, I'm going to make up a story. Boring. Yeah, I'm going to make up a story about a guy that's on the roof. Who was he? He was an actor. Which actor? A very specific French actor. And what were they doing? <laughs> well, wait filming? a minute. What's an unspecific French actor? Well, if it would have been like Gérard Depardieu, who's a... Who's, he would oh, never I get see. up on Do you know what I mean? Like, what I mean? Like, well he's, known. Yeah, like, I mean, he's... Roman Juris is well known, but he, it's a very specific choice that you made for that name. Yeah. 
I would love to see uh, Gerard Depardieu on a rooftop. That would be something, <laughs> yeah. something to behold, wouldn't it? <laughs> he wouldn't last on it he'd, for long. He'd, he'd just go straight through it. He'd urinate off it. Well, hats off to our jurists for getting up on the roof. Yeah, if it, it was it, him, it maybe, it might have been a stuntman. maybe a stuntman, maybe a stuntman. Anyway, so there you go. So I've got one point. Paul has got one point. Amber zero has got points. zero points Nul so point. far. Nul point. So um, Amber, let's go with you then next. Okay, then. Um, I was. It was going to be for 2020, but things changed. But I am going to enter the 2021 Marathon. You're Paris, gonna ent- Paris Marathon. You're going to enter the 2021 Paris Marathon. Marathon, yes. Okay. <laughs> and so... <laughs> okay, so laugh let's think up. about this. Laugh mm. it up. I mean, I'm just curious with my laughter. How is, what was her reaction to my laughter there? She was like, ah, in your face with your laughter. I mm. don't know, yeah, maybe. Mm. Uh, April 2021, is that when it is? When, what, what When's month the date? is it? It's, it's, isn't it April or May? I don't know the exact date. So you don't date. know the exact date? I don't know the exact mm. date. Okay. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. You Have you ever run... Do you smell that? <laughs> what? what bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> um, okay. Now, I, I remember spe- I, now, I remember speaking to you. I remember, yeah. <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah. About how you were doing an app yes. to help you start, uh, I think they call it jogging. Uh, right, uh, c- uh, couch to twenty k. That you were using that app to help you. Couch and to five k. Couch to five k. Sorry. Yeah. And so you were talking about jogging or running. Sorry, as it's yeah. supposed to be called running. these days. It's not the seventies anymore. <laughs> exactly. Um, and um, you know, you were talking about how you don't really run very much, but you were starting to try. Yes. Hmm. Have you? Do you well, <laughs> do you still run? He said to the pregnant woman. <laughs> Well, I barely walk at the moment, mm-hmm. and and this is as what slowed me down. But it came from that app. The, the 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 move, the decision to run the marathon. The ch- yeah, you were inspired by mm-hmm. doing that, using that app. And you thought I can do this. You I thought to yourself, this. I got into it. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you, uh, you're not the sort of person. You're not that kind of marathon type person. I think. What do you what, mean by that? Well, I just mean that you know. What do you mean by that? I don't. Think? I don't know you as like a kind of running around. A sporty like, person. Yeah, you're not a sporty person. I don't mean to say you're like you know you're not in good shape or anything. I'm not a sporty person. Not a sporty I'm person. not a sporty person. But why? Why are you doing it? Okay. What's the principal so motivation? Okay. There's different things. So the I started doing the running in the app last November. Okay. And where were you running? Monceau. Park Monceau. Park Monceau. That's a long way from your house. Yeah, but it's where online else, too. Where else is she going? Oh, yeah, she takes too. the metro to the park. <laughs> take, I took the metro to the park. It's Runs true. around. I took the metro to the park. <laughs> you do your warm up on the metro by jumping over the, the, barrier. the barriers. <laughs> <laughs> Runs around the park and then takes the metro back. Okay. Okay. Took, sorry, because you haven't done that since November. You were doing that in November, were you? This is November just gone? Before. The, the previous November. Previous November. 2018. Yeah. Is that when you started yeah. doing the running? Yeah. Okay, why would you start in November? As opposed to like April or May when the weather's nice. Well, unlike most people, I'm not a fan of the summer. I don't like the sun. Okay. Uh, when you go running in winter, it's actually quite nice. You pop on a jumper and, you know, you've got all your pockets for your phone and your bits and your bobs and your yeah. keys and your stuff. I don't mind running in the cold. Um, and, it was re- and it was surprisingly motivating. And so when... And I'd go three times a week. Yeah. And when did you decide, right, I'm going to run... How, how, how many kilometres is a marathon? 42. 42, is it? Is it? I don't actually know. So normally you would run how many kilometres? I, I just made that up. That might be complete bollocks. Hold know. on, hold hey, on, Siri, hold how on. How long is a marathon in kilometres? <laughs> Isn't it 26? One marathon is 42.2 kilometres. <sighs> all right, I was okay. off by 200 metres. That's all right. Very okay. good, yeah. So, um, and uh, <laughs> how long, how far, how many kilometres did you used to run when you were running in Parc Monceau? Well, I do the five k. You did. You used to do five k. I do the five k yeah. three yeah. times. Three but I do times it three a times a week. So you thought to yourself, "I want to do this eight more times in a row, please." No. Is that what you thought? No, no, no. <laughs> but then I, I started really liking it. I started liking the five k, and then like I started really enjoying going to park. And then I joined this group, the Adidas Runners. Do you know about them? They've got them all around Paris, different neighborhoods. There's one in Pigalle because I met them in the park once. The Adidas Runners. Yeah, the Adidas Pigal. 
runners. Pigau is a place in Paris, listeners. Yeah, and that uh-huh. was the closest one to me. And they're kind of like a group and they have like music and they kind of do their thing. And so I wanted to like go running with them. And then I did this like a run with a friend of mine in Champagne, which to be fair does involve drinking champagne. Wait a minute, listeners. <laughs> champagne is a place. It's not just a drink. So when she went running in champagne, it wasn't like... <laughs> <laughs> literally running, running in through. champagne. Yeah. She went to a place <laughs> called Champagne where you did a run. Oh, yeah, yes? exactly. It was 18 kilometres. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. How and was go, it? And it was fine. And it was really good. And it was good because there was a big group of us and like people dress up. And some people take it really very far with all the dress ups though because people would come in teams so it was like a smurf team and a troll team and like a where's wally team so everyone was like there was a really nice atmosphere and at each like 5k you can have a glass or more of champagne that's amazing and then so kind of people are pissed that's and unbelievable it's that's really, so much fun but does what? it so but is it like do they give you the champagne at the edge of the road like the marathon when they give you the water and <laughs> you keep little, running while you drink stand. or you stop no you can stop they've got snacks you don't have to you're, not, you're not running and trying to get a glass no. of champagne while you're running <laughs> so it's not really 18 kilometers it's sort of like five well, then a bit of a pause a bit of champagne can, carry on people can run it as they want so some people don't drink the champagne i, I swear only in france so you get a marathon where it's like like, oh, you have to stop every five kilometers for a glass of freaking champagne. <laughs> like, only in France. Like, when I came to Paris first, like, well, the first party I ever went to, it was yeah. just like, in the bathroom, the bath was full of bottles of champagne. <laughs> like, what is this place? What is the decadence of this place? And then, like, you know, you just, go, you just go around to some friend's house and it's like, what do you want to drink? How about champagne? Everyone's just drinking champagne yeah. all the time. It's like... I, the most French thing I ever saw was the other day, and it was, uh, there were three policemen on bikes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, that's hilarious. Yeah. Second of all, the middle policeman mm-hmm. had a baguette inside his bulletproof vest, right. but it was cut in half. So he went to the bakery, yeah. and he said, <laughs> in his fucking... Half a baguette. With his guns and his bulletproof <laughs> jacket, he's like, can I get a baguette, please? And the woman's like, yeah. And he was like, but can you cut it, it in half so that it can fit inside? And it was wedged inside of his bulletproof. <laughs> you, would, you wouldn't want sweaty bulletproof. Yeah. You can imagine jacket. terrorists like shooting me, and, and I can imagine you know, like in films where they go, "What saved you?" And they pull out a book from the inside yeah. pocket. Bible. <laughs> he would have been like, "The baguette saved me." <laughs> but you know, you wouldn't want your baguette to get shot, though, would you? I can understand no. why. He's I don't put, know. Oh. A baguette would save you, to be honest. Oh. No, it wouldn't. And it's it's old. if it's two days old, two it days would. old, three Only days in old. France. Yeah. Um, they, do you know that the the police on bikes? So I was crossing the road with my son, and he saw these bicycles police and he was just like oh not police and one of them like put they were sort of talking to us and he put his helmet on 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 hugo and they've got little walkie talkie inside like no he way. was like i could hear i could hear voices and they've got their little radio system inside oh, it's not funny. just a helmet they've got a whole thing wow yeah, I, I mean they seem pretty like useless policemen on bikes <laughs> but I imagine their bikes are like the Batmobile where they hit a button and something like some fucking turbo comes out Machine get, they can't just be policemen on bikes like it's just re- it's like policemen on roller, on roller blades they've that got was the them. first thing yeah I know they've got them that is, like, they've, the, the police use every mode of transport here we'll see them soon <laughs> on those scooters anyway back to Amber's anyway, story yeah. about okay. about running yeah, uh, American right so, okay right. so you were doing you were doing uh, Couch to 20k the app which helps you to 5k it was the, sorry the 5k was I don't know why I keep thinking 20k so so, uh, and I wasn't that ambitious. How far did you get with the... the were you, you were obviously, you started doing 5K eventually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you got to that point. And then you were like, I want to join this Adidas crew. Yeah. And you did. I and, d- well, I just joined their Facebook page. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because right. then we kind of... I got pregnant when I moved. But, like, but, um, minute, it's champ- but I'm still friends with them. But you went to Champagne... And I you, did. You I went ran, champagne and I ran, did this big run, and yeah. it was really fun. The sort of atmosphere, and obviously we were drinking champagne. Um, and then I was kind of, I was listening to this podcast, The Guilty Feminist. I don't know if you, if you yeah, know. you've tried to make me listen to it before, and I sort of just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> He's just got the word feminist. No, no, it's that. not the word feminist. It's just like like the same with almost every podcast that Amber tries to get me to listen to. <laughs> Almost all of them, and I'm sure they're excellent. I'm convinced they are. Like is it my, because my, you don't have time. Yeah, just like because my, you're too busy making podcasts. Yeah. So why would you listen? And when to I'm them not then? making podcasts, I'm listening to like all these other ones. And then there's just like all these other podcasts that don't get a look in because do you, do you get podcast stress? Sometimes I've got so many podcasts yeah. in my feed, I just have to delete them all. I don't. Yeah. I don't have. I don't it, listen to any podcast. It's complicated. You're, it's because you're both producing things. I'm just listening to podcasts yeah, and true. growing life. Anyway, all this to say, so th- she was talking about this. Um, this this woman who started this charity mm-hmm. called um 
with love or I can't remember what it's called. Sorry, right. my can't remember full of it's, holes. Can't remember what it's called, Paul. <laughs> but it's about convenient, isn't it? That it's right. about supporting refugees, and so I donated to it uh, mm-hmm. last year yeah. and the year before. Yeah. And then I was talking to a friend of mine, and I was saying, you know, it'd be really nice to raise some money for this because basically it's kind of like a shop, a shop online. You can buy like a welcome pack, or you can buy a sleeping bag, or you can kind of give them you know in theory things that they need and then yeah. it's taken to the it's the calais refugees yeah um just because it sort of feels really horrible anyway mm-hmm. and then i was saying like maybe we should do something to try and like raise some money because she did the 18k uh run with me as well and then so i was saying you know maybe we should try and challenge ourselves because the running is kind of really more fun than i thought and try and do a marathon and then like get some sponsorship and then the sort of combination of social pressure and everything would make us yeah. do, it. do it, like yeah. go through with it. And even if you, even if you walk it, like it doesn't like there's no because when we even when we were not on the 18k run, there were still people who were doing it seriously. Like they finished like, yeah. really really quickly. quickly, and we were you know pissed and like really <laughs> needed a pee and like well, it took eight hours. So uh, just going back to the champagne during the marathon thing, <laughs> yeah, yeah. which I can't get my head round. <laughs> It's like really good. You after do you've t- had three glasses, I mean, surely running is just out of the question, isn't it? At that point, yes. After three glasses of champagne, yes. Surely yeah. the, the the champagne would be very detrimental to the whole running around the park thing, well, right? It would be, but you see, I was having more of a controlled experience because although I was with the champagne gang and having a good time, I was actually pregnant, and so I didn't drink any ah, of the champagne. But I wait, did the running. You were I still running- did the dress up. And they would during the drink. There was still that nice atmosphere. You were running while pregnant, but it was right at the beginning. Oh, okay. It was in May. What time of the day was the was the run? It's the afternoon. Okay. It was a rainy May. There's the morning sickness there. <laughs> <laughs> Check out Sherlock Holmes over here. Um, okay, Paul. What do you think? What do you think, Paul? I'm in two minds about this. One because. Well, I'm not going to give my theories because then you might change your mind. No, I, 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 I shall I go first? Yeah, go if you've already got your, I, I, I can go first if yeah. you like. If you don't want to influence yeah, on, my then. decision, so it's tricky. It's tricky. But mm. Amber is, a, mm, she's clever. This this <laughs> person, she's very clever. So I think this. I think it's true. Mm-hmm. It's hard to imagine because I look so fat at the moment. Well, you don't look fat running. You don't anywhere. You look pregnant. You, okay, you don't thanks. look fat. Um, I don't know. I just think it's true. Um, I know that you were doing the app. I know you were running, so it doesn't take a long. Yeah, st- that's it's good. Not- it's good that you knew that because I, I, initially I'd have called bullshit. Mm-hmm. What that she was running at all? Yeah, yeah. No, I knew that she was doing the running, so it's not too much of a stretch to see how that could turn into. Hey, let's do the marathon yeah, yeah. because, especially when it's like into the future, when you're doing, ah, oh, we'll do it in eighteen months. Yeah, and then you can be like, yeah, let's do a marathon. So when it comes to actually doing it. You'll regret it. It'll be awful and horrible. When did sure. you dis- when so when did you when, so you and your friends when did you when did you decide to do this? Well, actually, we it was something that we'd kind of thought about. Like I sort of stop before you answer that question. Sorry, let's go back in time. The the running app. When did you start doing the running? Uh, God, it's got to be whew, it's it's oh, it's got to be about two years ago now. No, a year and a half. Yeah, because it was November. It was oh, it's November. Of- That's when you started running. Was November, <coughs> and then so by May, you, you in in May you were doing the champagne run. Yeah, and then that's and is that when you decided with your friend that you would do the marathon? We were thinking about it, and then I became pregnant, so I was like, "Well, we can't do it this because I'm gonna because obviously I've stopped mm. I've mm. stopped running for a while because then I started getting really sick with morning sickness, mm. and then you get really fat. And some people do run through the pregnancy, not me. Hold I'm on. also thinking that it, this might be kind of uh, March, also you forward April, thinking May. of like. I've got to kind of get back to fitness after having had a second child. Yeah. And so, you know, training to do a marathon, the fact it's for charity is going to be a motivational factor because mm-hmm. you wouldn't, uh, that is also a very much a, a you kind of thing because you wouldn't just do it. You, the fact you're doing it for a good cause, I think is going to motivate you a lot. So I'm saying it's true for, the, for those reasons. Paul? Everything I agree with, but there's something about me that just wants to say it's bullshit. 
and I don't know what it is. Uh, it's the, the yeah, because this is the thing. That's why I'm, that's why I said she's clever. Yeah, at the beginning. because everything all, makes sense and all the stories are true. There's the, but there's just something not right in the story, and I, or the, or there isn't. But it feels like if you're coming up with a story for the lying game, we almost always come up with a lie. Or if we don't, it's a very tenuous. It's, it, it, yeah, there's something. There's something because I I signed up for the Paris Marathon, never did it. Did you? So I can understand how it could be true, and it was the same hmm. sort of thing. Like my mate, uh, uh, my mate. Uh, Chris, uh, gingerhead guy who you've both met, uh, he was uh, he was like, yeah, I'm going to do the marathon next year. I like the way you like gingerhead guy. You're like, oh yeah, I know who you mean. Yeah, <laughs> like that's like his outstanding yeah, features. Exactly. He's so ginger. Well, otherwise, I said, oh, Dimitri the Greek. Um, yeah. And right. so he was like, I'll do the marathon. I'm coming to Paris to do the marathon next year. Do you want to join? I was like, yeah, all right. So this was in like October or something. Yeah. And so I signed up for it. I paid the whatever it was, thirty euros, maybe fifty, maybe eighty. I can't remember. Mm. And I just didn't do it. Okay, because I didn't train enough. Mm. So did, I want, you, did you do? Because you have to get a doctor's note and everything. I mean, did you go? To, so no, I not, think I, that's that's the hurdle I fell at. I couldn't be asked. You couldn't be asked. Yeah, you doing know, the administrative stuff. So it's not like you just stuff. didn't rock up. You didn't do any. You just signed up. I think so. Yeah, and it was also when I was working for Apple and I was traveling around. So yeah. the fact that you would si- that you're thinking about signing up, I, I it feels right. The champagne run is too specific for that to be bullshit. The 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 pack morceau, like you you would have to you would have had to create this whole situation. And bef- since you texted us l- this morning, Luke, to do this, that story you wouldn't have. I don't think you could have made that unless you had nothing else to do this morning, which maybe you didn't. To come up with all of those details about she went running. for a scan this morning. They scanned, um, you know, like a oh, okay, ultrasound. You went for a, the ultrasound, yeah, yeah. nice. The five month up. No, what am I no, talking no, about? It was just, the, it was just the last a, it was one. Just a um, all right, okay. so all right. yeah, I want to say it's true, but I'm all, I'm just I'm just going to say opposite so that she doesn't get two points if uh, you're. Ro- do you know what I mean? Mm. And it's a tactical. You're one. doing He's this again. You're doing tactical. this again. Yeah, but that's Paul. how you win stuff. Hedging your bets, being no, tactical. I just, I'm, I'm going to say it's wrong, even though if I lose the point, it means that. Uh, well, that means she gets a point. So then, yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh. so it's like and if you, if you go point. the other way, so if you if, if you choose a different thing to me, she's going to get a point. Either if you're right or I'm right, she will get a point or whatever. So yeah, that's true. I don't know. Just just but she could also get mm, say what you think. I'm, I'm, Stop I'm trying gonna, to be. I'm, I'm going to say false. I'm going to say false. Lie. You, yeah, you lie. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lie. Right. Okay. So I say true. He says lie. It is. It, it's a lie. Ah! <laughs> I, yes! uh, you got me completely. I, I know. I never was, really made it to 5K. It was just so far. Uh, four and a half. Um, I, I like the idea of, of raising money for charity, doing a run, but really the marathon, I might die. I would probably <laughs> die. I was pregnant when I went to Champagne. I didn't realise it. I was wasted and we actually... <laughs> what, you drank hitched, the champagne? We hitched a lift back from some random farmer because like we just, by the end, I was like, I can't, I'm going to die. Because you didn't realise you Well, yeah, pregnant. because May would have been like the first month. Of, it was the of, first, yeah, it was like the so first you would week. So you would have maybe not even known that you I were pregnant, right? Exactly. So that's why... I, but um, but I have oh. I have considered raising money for that charity through running, but just not the marathon. I just <laughs> Luke, I just forty two kilometers. I can barely I make five. S- so much. Faith. Actually, you know where I think it might have come from the fact that you didn't know how long a marathon was. Like when you were like, it's, "How long's a marathon?" You were like, twenty six mm. miles." Yeah, it is twenty six. Yeah, twenty six and forty two. It's don't get into the maths again, please. Don't go maths. We couldn't work I out can't, four. I can't, I can't it handle it. It is 26. That's why when I was like 42, I'm like, no, because that's exactly double. And it's not two kilometers it's to four, one mile. It's 42 point something. 42.2. Yeah. No, because it's not exactly double. It's 2.2 kilometers, I think, yeah, a mile think or it something is, yeah. like that. No, it's 1.6. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.6. Oh, no, that's 1. 1.6. All right. Doesn't matter. Numbers. Um, but, I mean, you even knew, for example, that um, if you wanted to pull out of the marathon, you, you have to have a doctor's note and stuff. You know that. I know. So I thought, like, yeah, that's you, a good point. Well, because there is also other runs in Paris, which I did think about doing with my friend, like the 10K. which is yeah, which is the breakfast run, which, um, and that? it just we goes. Just I think it goes includes. from the Louvre to Trocadero, and like you can have <laughs> breakfast, and it's, I think you don't need a doctor's note. It's so short. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Okay. I like the idea of running. I find but it I, hilarious I feel that you need a doctor's note. It's like, why can't you just sign up at your own peril? And if you die, then it's your problem. Because <laughs> this is France. You need to, everything needs to be put on paper. Otherwise, it didn't France. happen. Yeah, the paper is. I I because we have disclaimers. It's like if I run and I die, you don't. Yeah. No one in my, my family fault. can go after yeah. you. Yeah. We don't need a doctor's note. Anyway, it's, like, it's just France. Everything has to be on paper because, like, they, uh, they, like they respect paper. 
yeah. in this country. They do. Okay, oh. so the points at this stage are so. I Paul's got, got two. Paul's got two. Uh, you've got one, Amber, and I've got one. Yeah. Okay. So oh, Paul is in again. the lead. I think this is the same so, situation. What as happens last here <laughs> is that we need to both get this right to stop him from winning. Yeah. Right. Basically, because get... then we'll just it'll be a draw. Yeah. Um, okay. I think you. Probably, I don't know. I, I, again, I can't work out the maths. Yeah, it's, let's it's, just it, play the no, game. No, we, no, we we are. Here's the maths. If you, if I tell a lie, yes, and you both call me out on it, yeah, then it's a draw. We all get two. We, we all, all get, get two. two. However, if one of you get it wrong, you win. I win. So basically, we, you're, yeah. you're you're going to have team gonna, up. We're going to team up. You're, it, tactically, what you need to do is you need to both. It's it's all or nothing. Yeah, we've both. It's all or nothing. Either we I get four. Either I get yeah. four points out of this, and you end up with one, yeah. or we all end up with two. So we've got yeah. to agree, Amber, here yeah. to stand yeah. any yeah. chance of we can't hedge which our makes bets. it yeah. more interesting because then you have to. Yeah. We've got to try you have to convince yeah. each other as yeah. well. Exactly. Okay, so Paul, can you te- play for. could you tell us your thing, oh, please? God. I, and now, listeners, I asked them to prepare for this like this morning, just a few hours ago. So not a lot of thoughts gone into. I, this. I no, and I've literally been thinking about mine since we've started the game. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think how to phrase the initial <laughs> sentence because it's a lot. It, 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 um, mm-hmm. At two o'clock in the morning, yeah. on a Sunday morning. Okay. In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. Um, a, a, a Scottish man. <laughs> a Scottish man. Uh, Cured my uh, baby's crying. A, a Scottish man cured your baby's crying. So your baby, my, my, yeah. Go your on. baby was crying, and it was two a.m. Uh, on a what Sunday morning? Yeah, in the middle of the night, yeah. and a Scottish man stopped your daughter from crying. Was this Correct. a YouTube video that you were watching at two yeah. in the morning? With a Scottish <laughs> no, doctor. No. So this is a real a Scottish real man. Scot- this is a real Scottish man, and this happened in France because you haven't. Uh, gone anywhere with your daughter yet have you You haven't left the country have you Uh, you haven't no we talked about (laughs) he can't remember yeah he's too tired Uh, we have we've talked about this yeah no we haven't left i i i I have left on my own that's why i was thinking did i you haven't traveled with with her where did you meet this scottish man was Uh, at hospital at hospital yeah okay A, a doctor no so you but t- I mean, he, he had the same efficiency as a doctor. No, but was he just in the hospital to sort of cure something himself? Uh, or was he working at the hospital? No, he was, he was a patient. Well, his daughter was a patient. Okay. So you went to <laughs> a... Uh, okay. You, why did you bring your daughter to a hospital then? Because um, she was crying. Yeah. She was crying so much. They were like, right. Yeah. Essentially what happened was Saturday... Um, I wasn't performing that weekend. I don't know why. Uh, it Is it because you needed to make up this story? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, sorry, everyone. Uh, 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 so British au presque is not happening this weekend because uh, I, have to think, I have to think of a story for Luke's game. I wasn't performing that Saturday. Mm, interesting that you weren't performing that particular Saturday. Shut up. It doesn't matter. I wasn't performing that Saturday. And so it was what in ha- summer, was it? Oh, I, I don't remember when it was. Before your show started. <laughs> no. uh, Why was this Yeah, Scottish I think man? it was that. I think it must have been in September. I'll be honest. Um, I think because if she was crying that much and you brought it to hospital, it was probably earlier on. It's like fairly early in the... In the, in the, in the, in in the, the baby game. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, because she cried a lot, especially at the beginning. She cried a lot, especially at the beginning. This one was she was crying the whole day on Saturday. I mean, not the whole day, but from about six p.m. onwards, she was crying, and it was really difficult to figure out what was wrong with her. Mm -hmm. I was trying all the dad ninja moves where you put them like on your stomach. uh, Put them on your stomach. No, but you put them on their stomach on your arm, and you Mm -hmm. hold their head, and like that normally is like the off switch. Uh, that wasn't working. <laughs> we were trying all sorts of stuff. It wasn't working. <laughs> Did you try t- turning her off and turning her on again? Yeah, that didn't work. Taking the batteries out and <laughs> blowing. Oh, we on didn't them. try that one. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. Although my 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 one of the things that I do when she starts whinging is I go uh, hurricane <laughs> and I blow in her face and she goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing and she stops crying. Okay. Uh, so anyway, she was crying the whole day and um, I think it was around midnight. Mm. Something like that. We we made the executive decision to go to the hospital because we had no other choice. We didn't yeah. know, yeah. and it was kind of the first night where it was that bad. Okay. Um, Which hospital? 
Uh, it was the children's hospital. Yeah, which uh, one? Yeah, all the which children. One? That's where all the children are doctors and nurses. It's like, <laughs> welcome to the children's hospital. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, God. Uh, in Paris, <laughs> in the south of Paris. Well, which one? Because there's a... There's I don't know what it was Nicker? called. It's just that Nicker? maybe, yeah. It's one that was Paul near Vov. Like okay. the nearest... <coughs> it was the nearest Paul kind Royale. of hospital. There were two hospitals nearby. Port, Port Royal. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, all right. So you're at the children's hospital. So we, we went to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Uh, we drove there. And they said, sorry, we can't uh, do anything for your, your crying child. But, but uh, we, do have a Scottish, <laughs> we do have a Scottish man here who might be able to help. <laughs> all right, what's the problem? Yeah, that ain't your bastard. No, what happened was... Yeah, no. shouted at her. Uh, Stop crying! See you! <laughs> <laughs> she was, That's basically what happened. <laughs> apart, <laughs> apart from the doctors saying no, what happened was we arrived at the hospital and... Uh, we we chose the children's hospital because we thought they'll be specialised and they'll know more what's happening with her than if we go to like a, a normal hospital yeah. that's not specialised, doesn't have a special paediatric... If you go to a normal hospital, they won't see you. What, you'd be invisible? Yes. In a normal hospital? In a normal hospital. Really? No, because I took Hugo to a hospital when he like fell over and he needed stitches. Yeah. And they said, oh, we can't, we can't do that here. You have to go to a children's hospital. Oh, really? And yeah, exactly. Oh, so maybe that's why it was time. packed. <laughs> well, what's, why can't they put stitches in a child's... They said that it has to be, it's France, they said it had to be a, a, a pediatric hospital, okay. it had to be a children's hospital, I couldn't just, because it was, uh, the hospital was next to our house, it was Larry Boisier, yeah. so I just went next door and they were like, and I was like, it's just stitches, it's not like an internal yeah, right. children's bones and internal, no, it was just stitches, they were like, no, and I had to go to hospital. Uh, maybe, that, hospital. maybe we made the right decision, it felt like we didn't, because did. when we arrived, they were, it, it, was, it was packed, yeah. Yeah. It was, it, there were so many kids, oh. uh, like sick, like properly sick like mm. like some of them with their arms like in car oh. like it was just like oh jesus <laughs> and, the, and, the, and, and you were thinking they're going to ask us so what's the problem is like uh, she's crying she's just exactly crying. Yeah. It's like, is this your first baby go home yeah how, it, how, well that we felt bad walking in like she was crying she was whinging <laughs> uh and uh we walk in and we saw the state of the wait, waiting room we're like oh okay yeah maybe this isn't this bad then and so anyway we go to the we go to the thing we check them in they're asking us what's wrong we're like she's crying if you blah 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 whatever um, okay. Like, wait here. Okay. So we waited uh, for, th- uh, I think it was three or four hours before we saw a, a nurse and then an hour afterwards to see the doctor. But in the, in the meantime, while we were in the waiting room, mm-hmm. Scottish guy comes in. How did you know he was Scottish? Was it the kilt? <laughs> <laughs> it was the ginger hair. Um, <laughs> because he was drinking iron brew, right? right. <laughs> Made in Scotland from Gurders. Gurders. Uh, Iron Brew, ladies and gentlemen, is a is a uh, soft drink, a carbonated soft drink that uh, is popular in Scotland, and uh, it's called Iron Brew. And the tagline was "Made in Scotland from Gurders." Gurders are like big pieces of metal. It's not actually made from. Although big. you can get alcoholic Iron Brew, can you? I'm sure, you can. Wicked. WKD is alcoholic oh, is that, brew. Uh, anyway. Oh, so it is, yeah. It's not really made from girders. It's not really made from, from iron <laughs> metal things. It's, uh, it's Iron just... brew. And it's also spelled I-R-N. I-R-N-B-R-U. Iron B-R-U. brew. Anyway, so okay, he, yeah. uh, he wasn't wearing a kilt or drinking iron brew. So uh, how did you know he was Scottish? So he walks in. <laughs> There's an Irishman and an Englishman. <laughs> yeah, as well, next to him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Scottishman, Englishman, Frenchman walk into a hospital. <laughs> English, Irishman, and Scotsman. Yeah, go to a, yeah, okay. go to a French hospital. Um, and uh, it's a good joke. I might, I might have to. <laughs> Englishman, <laughs> Irishman, and Scotsman go to a French hospital. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so he walks in. Initially, we didn't know he was Scottish. I didn't know he was Scottish when he walked in. I couldn't tell by his uh, appearance. Yeah. Um, and right he was way. with his. He was with his his daughter. How old was she? I don't know, but she was about, I'd say, 16, 17. How did you know she was his daughter? I didn't initially, but by the... I mean, he, he was middle-aged, and she was underaged, And so I wasn't in my mind going, ah, oh, they're probably fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed... Yeah. I, I don't know if it was his daughter or not, but it, I mean, that's the conclusion I came to. Of course, uh-huh. of course. I was just being silly. <laughs> and she was wearing... Um, she had no shoes on to start with, so she was barefoot. Fair enough. Which was strange, mm-hmm. uh, and they came in. Well, she was, was that actually, the problem? Excuse me, my daughter's lost her shoes. <laughs> she was. Uh, she was actually on a stretcher. Um, Sorry, Scottish people. Yeah, she was. <laughs> she was on a stretcher with some ambulance people, um, 
and they came in. He checked. He didn't really speak French, right? And so... What was it like him trying to speak French? Scottish. He, he wasn't. I, I can't even... I, I, this bit's a bit blurry. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. No, he, he, went, he went to the... Um, he basically checked in. I can't remember if he was speaking French. I think he was just speaking English. But we were too far away that I couldn't really understand what he was okay. saying. He checked in to the people. He was talking to the accueil, to the receptionist, checking in. She was still in the, in the, in the, in the stretcher. But then she got off the stretcher. Uh, and then the ambulance people left with the stretcher. Okay. And she was stood up uh, barefoot. And she was wearing like a white dress like with a, the, the skirt ended here, right? Uh, like it was a mini skirt, like okay. a proper mini. And at some stage, I don't know why, I, he was drunk, first of all. Okay, that's Be- how you knew he was Scottish. Yeah, because also, cause then he started kicking off. He started going mental because oh, really? he, didn't, he couldn't get what he, the message he wanted through to the, to the people that were behind the desk. They didn't understand what he was saying because he's got a thick Scottish accent. But I still couldn't hear what was going just I could, hear, I could hear the volume going off while this was happening. What did it sound like? It was just, I mean, it's difficult. It was just like, I don't know if I... Look here. That was I basically... I can't do it. I'm, I'm, I can't and it was it. only, it was only until, like, then he got on the phone and he was talking to, um, I don't know, to somebody else, English speaking, on the phone. And he started, that's when he started going properly mental. When he was like, I don't know what the fuck we're doing. I don't know where we are. We're at some children's hospital in Paris. Fucking, but he goes mental. Yeah. And, and he, when he, when he starts shouting... <laughs> His daughter's like, oh my God, what are you doing? She's all embarrassed. And this is the point where Louise stopped crying. Yeah. And she was just like perturbed. She was like, what? what, what? She's like, eh, what's going on over here? Yeah. So she stopped crying and, and most of the kids stopped crying. Like it was just like, you know, the awkward, you know, when you hear somebody shouting in a public yeah. place, yeah. everyone sort of everyone stops. Like, yeah. That's what happened. And this lasted for, I don't know, 30 seconds a minute. And then uh, he calmed down. The security guard came over. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, calmed him down, and then chatted again to the to the people, the desk people, the desk people, the receptionists, mm-hmm. and then he kicked off another time about five minutes later, yeah. swearing, fucking, fucking, and um, and then that was that. We don't really know what had happened. No to visible him. injuries on the daughter. No, not really. Which was. Interesting because there was no like they, she came in on a, a stretcher. Yeah, on a stretcher. So I don't know. I don't know whether she drank. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it was. And but I couldn't. Or his accent was so strong. I could tell he was Scottish, but I couldn't figure out what the what problem was because he. I don't, I, maybe they'd just never seen anyone so drunk, drunk, or maybe wearing such an inappropriate dr- skirt. Yeah. So I, I think like, oh, he there had, must be a problem. Quick. I think there were people <laughs> of his party. In Paris as well. What was going on? Was there some Scottish it's event? Probably like they were trying to get event? into a club, right? In Paris, they're trying to, like she's trying to get into a club. She's wearing this tiny mini skirt, and every club is going no, 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 no. And then eventually, they're like, "Look, take your daughter to a hospital. She's sick. Look at the short. Look at the length of her <laughs> skirt. Take her to a hospital, not a nightclub." <laughs> she's. Yeah, that's funny. We uh, can't understand what you're saying. Quick, they must be asking for they help. Both need medical assistance. Yeah. Look at the length of her skirt and the sound of his voice. <laughs> Straight to hospital <laughs> for the both of you. Um, so you never found out what was wrong with them? And you didn't actually have any direct chats with them? No, I thought about intervening and don't going in involved. and being like, hey, yeah. I speak French and English, blah, 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 whatever. Guys, 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 don't, don't, don't worry, guys. I speak Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> but you I just didn't. I just, no. I thought it was funnier just to sit back and uh, laugh with Addy while yeah. Louise was not crying. She, so did she then continue not to cry? Uh, she yeah she stopped crying for a while and then she started again and then eventually we went to the doctor uh, we saw the, the the nurse and then an hour later we saw the doctor and it turned out to be gastric reflux and uh, we needed to have some Gaviscon okay gastric uh, and then reflux we got- is like as- acids from the stomach making their way up the uh, digestive tract mm-hmm. uh, which can cause like burns or esophagus heartburn heartburn yeah so very burns. uncomfortable and I w- I'd be I'd be crying as yeah. well so we, uh, that was it five in the morning so just to find out we could have just got Gaviscon hmm so Amber we need to team up on this one don't we we do yeah I, um, where, where do you stand on this? I'm feeling it. I mean, new parents taking their baby to the hospital. I mean, that's... that's textbook. Very pl- textbook. Textbook. Did you both have to do that as well? Yeah. Yeah. No. 
because I am a much worse parent. I'm like, 42 degree fever? It'll be all right. <laughs> Let it burn it through. Oh. <laughs> My mother brought me up telling me, you know, doctors, Amber, very important people. You're not to be disturbing them with your ailments. Really? That's, that's hilarious. I, went, I, told you, I don't know if I told you, but I went to the, to the, to the hospital in, in London and um, I yeah. saw a doctor after much waiting. He was... Um, an African doctor, which is only funny because there is a reason. Um, and he, he didn't examine me. He just, he said to me, you look fine. You can go home. Just go home. After four hours of waiting, he was just like, you, you look absolute. You can stand. Go home. I was like, <laughs> look at these, pe- look at look these, at these people. people. Yes. Look at these people. And I thought, yes, you've, you've given me some perspective. Thank you. I, I feel foolish. I'm going to go home. And, and I did. Yeah. And I, I thought, well, I'm clearly, I am fine. Look, yeah. I'm standing. I can go home. Mm-hmm. So um, that's the NHS. Um, yeah. But yeah, new parents, hospital, tick, 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 tick. Gavis gone. Yes. Reflux. Yes. The, the, the Scottish man didn't cure her. He just uh, made quite a lot of white noise. Which all children like, and Scottish she was white noise. Scottish white noise. That's, should, it's very white noise. You should <laughs> ginger noise. Ginger noise. Lol, lol. You should make an app. Just a Scottish man just shouting, and it would like calm babies. Can yeah. I just say that we love Scottish people? I love Scotland. Yes, and the Scottish accent, the best. Many oh, there are many Scottish. The accents. There are many Scottish accents. Many, many, many. We'll put that out there. Yeah. Yes, the glass sorry. region one. Kevin Bridges, he just cra- it's just his voice, he cracks. So anyway. good. Yeah. No, but I mean, at the moment, I'm just about to buy a white noise machine for the baby. Because, you mm. know, I, I've learned about the five S's, you know, swaddling and soothing. Oh, have you read that shushing. book as well? Yeah, I'm reading that book. White noise? Uh, white, white noise is white noises. But I thought that book was for like... It's white noise. For like beginning babies oh you're buying it for the new one yeah that, that baby that I'm about to have sorry I thought, I yeah, thought you were talking uh, about Hugo yeah. I don't know if you've noticed <laughs> she's pregnant <laughs> yeah but what I mean is if you've already been through it once why are you because reading... I failed the first time around <laughs> Hugo was right. a failed project he, just, he is still wakes up every single night multiple yeah. times like, he's I'm like, like uh, Luke's business English class <laughs> yeah that's right Luke's business, <laughs> Luke's business English <laughs> online course which um, yeah exactly just <laughs> Still, no, no, that's that's the premium service. It's going fantastically oh, well, thank right you. Then. But uh, the business English course that I wrote for several years, just sort of just <laughs> several no decades, no, 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 it hasn't come to fruition. But there's a lot of you know, there's still the work. The work is still there. It's still, the, all the documents are still there. So you can just get into it. Well, I mean, yeah. this is the thing. I I, I fail. You know, when you've had you've had one child and you're like, I'm not going to make those mistakes again. I'm going to get this baby to sleep. I'm going to find out. So I'm reading the book. I'm not going to make those mistakes again. I'm going to wear my condom. (laughs) (laughs) My dad just bought us the book for Christmas and Addy read like the first 10 pages. She's like, oh, it's really interesting. I'm like, oh, is it? She's like, yeah, learning about this 5S stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I'm listening to it on Audible on double speed because I'm like, I don't want to give enough of my time to this book. Right. So anyway. Anyway, So White Noise, I'm just saying you could go into business. You could record angry Scottish men. I think and it's more. Like, I, think I would rather it listen cal- to I don't think it calms them. I think it's just more scared. Well, it distracted them. It was more it like it, it, it was like a what's the word for it? An intervention, wasn't it? Yeah. Of like ah, heartburn, and then there's like a Scottish angry man in the back. Oh, you like, bastard! Oh, this is fascinating. <laughs> Never mind the heartburn. I think if it was also a story, Paul would have got involved, maybe. Do you think so? I don't think he would have done. Because there would have been more... Cause think about more, it, Amber. There's much more funnies to be had. But it takes longer no. It takes longer to make up like what he'd have got involved and said. Yeah. No. So he didn't get involved. I think the story, the, the fact we don't know who the Scottish person was, what the problem was, what this was, a lot of, un, lot of mystery... For me, that means makes it it's real. true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it makes yeah. it real because people don't write if it stories was a story, that don't mean anything. He would have got involved because then it would have been. There's a lot of opportunity for funnies. There's a sort of uh, a, a, a sort of um, a what's the, a, a bleak nihilistic sort of undertone to the story where it's like just some random like uh, Scottish drunk guy with a girl who's on a stretcher with no shoes on. It's like what is this weird sort of post-apocalyptic picture that you're painting i think it's true otherwise it would you know normally people's made up stories are a bit more a b c this happened then this happened and this happened and And if he was making it up i think he'd want to be a bit more noble and help he'd step in and say don't worry everyone i'll fix this but in this story 
he was like already tired at the bloody hospital, mm-hmm. been there for hours. He was just like, fuck you. You can sort out your own problems, random Scottish man. That's why he didn't get involved as well, because he's there with uh, Addie and Louise. And, he, you, know, he's, you know, he's trying to look after the child. He just child. wanted to go home. Yeah. And so, also the Scottish man, he, he looked really hard to try and make that quite an interesting story. Because it was really the Scottish man didn't cure his child but in any Paul, way. Paul does like to do that thing where he goes, Oi, you! Right? He does it in his show. He used to. Uh, yeah. So maybe he just came up with this whole thing just so he had an excuse to go, Oi, you! On the podcast. Nah. Can you do it for us? What is, what's that thing in, from, your, from your... From my first show. Uh, you don't have to do the whole bit in, no, unless it's you just, want to. No, it was... You it was uh, uh, oh, it was... Yeah, it was just in a queue where a Scottish guy pulled up an English guy for jumping in the queue. He goes, Oh, you, you bastard! Are you just going to jump in line there like a fucking prick? Right. There you See, go. he loves doing that. So uh, do you. You couldn't resist. No, it's fun, Everyone isn't it? Everyone does. Oh, it's yeah. it's got... See you, you bastard! Do you, I, I, on Facebook, I follow BBC Scotland. Oh, yeah. Just for the accents. Oh. Well, I, I have BBC Sounds, the app on my phone, yeah. which is basically BBC Radio's app now. And you can go through all the different local radio stations yes. and stuff. I love listening to all the different regional <laughs> radio. It's true. Oh, why, hey, man, welcome to BBC Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> And more <laughs> and more horrible uh, <laughs> stereotypes of uh, people from. Do you know? I was looking London. at Ant and Deck just the other oh, day, yeah. probably in the Daily Mail. Sorry, and um, Ant or Deck, I still don't know which one's which. Had has had a haircut similar to when he was younger, and I was thinking, and he's settling with his wife, his ex-wife, for a thirty-one million pound divorce thing. Fuck. And I thought, could they have imagined when they were in Biker Grove all those years ago, settling, paying somebody thirty-one. They are pounds. worth a fortune. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, uh, Ant and Deck are... Uh, <laughs> uh, Have you never done an episode nope, on Ant and Deck? Nope, I must. Uh, Ant and Deck are... Uh, national televi- treasures. National tre- treasures. Television presenters. They started out their career on a popular soap opera for children, which was called Grange... Let's get ready to rumble. Grain- <laughs> it, the, 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 the soap opera was called Grange Hill. No, it was called Biker Grove. Biker and Grove. it was set in uh, <laughs> on Tyneside, where people speak like that man. You know, uh, why I man, spooky all that stuff and then they became pop stars and then they became TV presenters but they're from Newcastle yeah. so they've got that sort of Geordie accent like yeah they were the, I think they were the first ones on British TV that had a, a, that strong of yeah, a regional maybe. accent that that, 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 um, that became popular yeah Jimmy Nail well that they became presenters like they weren't yeah. comedians yeah. Yeah. they were like they yeah. They were presenting a lot of stuff. And everyone loved them and they were adorable and stuff Still like that. And them. now they're, they've got all the usual problems that come along with being famous and in Britain, which is the press hound them and make their lives difficult and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, but is Paul's story true? Uh, yes, I think so. I think it's true too. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Because we've got to get this right. I'm, I'm prepared to either win or lose spectacularly. It's, it's, I'm going to yeah. say true. Well, you, say you, true I mean, you're not, you, you're not winning. It would just be a, it would be draw. a draw. Yeah. Draw, yeah. okay. We've got to stop Paul. That's what we've got to do. That's here. all I want in yeah. life. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Paul, we think that it is a true story. Both going with true? Yes. Yeah. Both going with true? Yeah. It's true. Yeah! <laughs> we stopped Paul <laughs> in his tracks. So it's two points two, two, two. for everyone. Two, two, two. It's a draw. And you know what that means, listeners? We're going to have to have a rematch. Yes. But we can't do it now. You both <laughs> told true stories. It's easier to tell a true story. Uh, what, ge- generally or for Yeah, us? it is. Well, I mean, because when you, when you started being like, oh, uh, what I should have done at, at, at that stage. When? That, that during that telling of that story, yeah. I should have gone into the like. Yeah, I did come in and I and I talked to the Scottish Why? guy. Oh, to make it alive, to make it sound then, like uh, to make the detail sound a bit more sketchy. To be like, oh, hold on, you so hold on, Paul, you jumped into a conversation. No, you didn't. You were- so that would have been a lie then, though. If you'd said that, that would have been a lie. If you make any, if any part of your story is not true, yeah. the story is a lie. Yeah, but then, uh, yeah, but then you would have maybe thought, yeah, those are the rules. Mean, those yeah. are the rules. It's got to be a true story. The thing is, it's easier to tell the truth because it feels. Better. It's hard to lie. Yeah. You know, people don't like lying. And then, of course, you've got all the facts. It, and anything you don't know is fine because it's still true. Mm-hmm. Also, there was a chance that you tell a true story because it, you, you've got to make up a lie. Yeah, it takes that's longer. The other thing, and yeah. we knew that Paul was at a disadvantage because he had not thought of this. So he just came up with something yeah, that was true because it's it how easier. uncreative I am. No, it's hard to come up with these. I mean, no. I, I always tell true stories in this game. Have you not noticed? 
I don't know. Do you much, always tell true yeah, stories? Yeah, pretty much every single story I've told in this game that I can remember has been true, hasn't it? I don't know. And you there was to. there was a whole thing where you were saying like uh, that I'm incapable of lying. There was a whole meme <laughs> where you were like, <laughs> "You can never lie. Luke can't lie." Yeah, <laughs> so it's true. true. But then the one time I flipped the script and I lied, and uh, you you thought it was true. I can't remember what they all were. No, I one, can't remember. It was like you Paul had, is good at lying. Paul is. Paul, Paul is mm. good at lying. Like he if, can... I've, if I've got the time to come up with a bullshit story, I can, I can figure out the details. But I, had, uh, I met Dave Grohl uh, at a Buddhist temple. Um, in Japan, that was in true. In Japan. Right? I, had, uh, I, I hit a teacher on the back of the head <laughs> when I was in secondary school, which was true. I had, um, what was the other one? I told a joke in class and one of my students left the country the next day. Do you remember that? No. You don't remember that, do you? Do you remember that? Vaguely. That was also true. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Maybe it's just your life is full of humorous anecdotes. Yeah. I don't know. So can I just ask you a couple of questions from the comments section before we finish? Yeah. Yeah. Have we got time? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Very quickly. So this is from eight months ago. The last time time you were on the podcast, the two of you, which was an episode called Sleep with Amber and Paul. (laughs) Sleep with Amber and Paul. Which I think no, no one got the joke, of course. Sleep with Amber and Paul. We talked oh, about okay. sleep. Yeah, yeah but I remember. Like, yeah, yes, we did. We did. Eight months ago, we talked about sleep in my flat. God. It's been an intense time, Paul. He can't remember what sleep he is. Can't remember. So. Anyway, I'd, I I had understood if we'd have talked about that after I had a baby, but I don't remember talking about it before. Anyway, so just some comments. Questions. Jackson Franco, eight months ago, wrote, "I love listening to the trio, Luke, Amber, and Paul." The, uh, the, the pod pals, the uh, t- tangential trio. Uh, this episode is the funniest so far. I-M-H-O, which means? In my honest opinion. I, it's in my humble opinion. Oh, is it? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I was at the gym. Okay, boomer. <laughs> Shut up. Get out of town with that. <laughs> no, I'm not even offended that he said that. I just hate these yep. just boomer millennials. You're not a boomer. Yeah. No, I'm not. Um, I was at the gym and <laughs> could I was at the gym and couldn't help laughing out loud and getting some glances. K K K K K. What does K K K? It's a it's laughing in a in another language. Right. I'm trying to think uh, like like, in which country do they laugh like that? <laughs> in Russia. I don't know. I don't know. In, okay. in, in the Spanish... What's his name? Jackson Franco. Mm, so the, the Spanish usually go, ja, 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 ja. Yeah, but yeah. it's ha, 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 ha. Because right. you, you pronounce J as a ha <laughs> in Spanish. Yeah. But for us, it's just ja, 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 ja. It's like yeah. a, they're listening to dub reggae all the time. Ja, yeah. ja, ja, ja. Ja, ja, binks. Yeah. Um... So I couldn't help laughing, especially when Luke does the Arnold Schwarzenegger voice. Mm-hmm. Don't remember that. Nor do I. No, I said you don't remember that. That's not how you respond to you don't remember. You don't remember that, nor do I. Huh? Anyway. <laughs> all right, calm it down. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> fucking hell. No, no, no. We all like the Arnold right, Schwarzenegger voice. Sorry, I'm sorry. All right, teacher Luke. <laughs> calm it down. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, just trying to be funny. <laughs> Thanks a lot to you three for bringing laughter to my life. Oh, oh. that's nice. Next What's one? the question? There's no question. It's oh. just comments. <laughs> just comments. <laughs> you said, oh, can we answer some questions? No, there are questions. Okay. There are some. For example, Kat wrote this, because we're talking about sleep. Do you guys grind your teeth in your sleep? Uh, I don't know, because I'm sleeping. Mm-hmm. Okay, fair enough. Amber? No. Right. I, I don't know. I, I don't, don't think, think so. so. I used to, you know. I used Did to grind you? my teeth. I used to have dreams that I was grinding my teeth. It was horrible. I remember having one nightmare in particular where I, I was talking to Bono from U2. <laughs> yeah. That you know, would make you grind your as teeth. As you do. And I was like, ah, grinding my teeth while talking to him. And then all my teeth fell out and fell on the floor. Yeah, I have many dreams where my oh. teeth fall out on the floor. Yeah. I think it means or something. Or just fall out. It's supposed to mean that you're going to be rich or something. Yeah, right. I thought it was fear of aging. Apparently. Fear of aging. You're going to yeah. be rich. Okay. Anyway, all right then. Uh, no. Actually, Kat left more questions about dreaming, but we're going to have to leave that one for another time. Jason Zhu, spelt Jason X-U. Oh, Jason yeah. Zhu, uh, that's how you pronounce that, isn't I think it? So. I think so. Thanks for this amazing episode, and I would just like to get the explanation about the joke at the end, about the Lion King. <laughs> oh, I oh, thought it was going to be the Russian I joke. Couldn't, I couldn't get it. The Lion King? The Do you Lion remember the Lion King, King joke? No, of this course This is the joke that, that I thought caused that student to leave the country because I told it to him. And it was basically, I love having lions. 
Oh. I have a lion every weekend. I'm the Lion King. Oh, God. It's because it's not a joke. Fuck off. It <laughs> is a joke. It's a joke. It's a... What it is, is a it? joke. Lion. Lion. I'm the Lion yeah, King. Yeah, but I'm you're the, the Lion, lion King. king. It's... Yeah, it's not a great joke, but it is a joke. No, but it's, it's what it is, right? And I don't know why this it's basically is. basically the Russian joke. It's basically the Russian joke. It's, it's, it's a play on word joke in British English that... Because uh, Americans don't really it's in make, English. Yeah, but Americans... They say lion? Yeah, but, yeah I know. Lion. But, lion. A lion. A lion. A, yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, but Americans don't make jokes like that. It's a very, <laughs> uh, it's, it's a very English thing to do with jokes like that. And we find it, like, it, we, yeah. we find it funny in an ironic way. In the sense yeah. that we're like, oh, that's such a shit joke that it's funny. Yes, exactly. Uh, but the thing is, no one I ever speak, like, n- no one that's not English gets, that. not even Americans. Yeah. And that's the thing. So it's, They need th- to sort their shit out, Paul. That's the problem. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't. I feel bad because it's it's every like uh, I. There's a couple of times I've had different jokes like that, similar to the Russian joke, where you're just like, oh, it's just not, you know. It's like what did I say earlier on? Ecstatic, you know, like yeah. the, that, that. That would Ec- be a similar ecstatic. sort of joke, like the drier. No, are just, you ecstatic? Yeah. Uh, it's all right. Look, uh, they're just shitty dad jokes, and it's just I just enjoy terrible dad yeah. jokes. But, but, I, but not understanding the... them is it? What what I, what what interests me is do they not understand? the humour behind the shit play yeah, on words or do they just not understand the play on words? They take it seriously. They take it on face value. It's both. They don't understand the play on words and then they don't understand the fact that I'm just enjoying a, a kind of a... Ter- All right, Richard, a let joke. us know in the comments. Richard. Please. Is it isn't Richard Jason. Zoo? Jason. Jason. Where do they get Richard from? I don't know. Jason. Interesting. His name is Jason Zoo and he's written a comment about a lion. I so <laughs> just thought I'd meant, um, mention it. But yeah, I, I like. I think it'd be more Zoo. specific. Jason Zoo oh, Amber. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. That okay. was, that was. But okay. no, but it's. I, I, it interests me. This thing of like people not understanding the Russian joke. Yeah. Is it? What are they not understand? Are they not understanding they why it's funny, or are they not understanding that they no, they're, sound they're, the they're same? They're not understanding that they sound the same. I think they because, can't believe because, it. like, remember, there's that one comment from someone saying, "I think the problem here <laughs> is that in for Russian people." The words Russian and rushing sound the same. This is the problem. It's like, that's not the problem. That's the joke. <laughs> See, that's the, we're, we're approaching this from the wrong position. That's the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> that is very much the joke. Yes, I think. So the joke, Jason, is that lion, the, the animal called a lion from the Lion King. Lion. Rawr. Which is actually lion. pronounced lion. It's pronounced lion. Yeah. Sounds very similar to the word lie in, which means to sleep mm. in and to not wake up in the morning. So if you're having a lion, it means that you're sleeping in. Yeah. So lie in and lion sound the same. So when you say I'm the Lion King, I'm the Lion King. I'd, I, I'm the King of Lions. I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm which the lion that, king. that half of yep. it makes sense. Obviously, I'm the Lion King, meaning I'm the King of all the Lions. Doesn't make sense. But, you know, never mind. That's it, yeah. Yeah. The, one more comment. Uh, okay. The, the name of this episode was uh, Sleep with Amber on my podcast app, so I hoped it was a sleep meditation guide by Amber. Oh. I even chose an evening to go to sleep with it. <laughs> so again, another, per- another person who didn't get the joke. Well, uh, someone else said to me, oh, I like listening to your podcast. So I put it on to go to sleep. Yeah. And I thought, well, do you like listening to it? Maybe yeah. I should branch out into like, because you know, you have all those apps oh, where people you, are just telling you a t- story, yeah. just like, I get the thing. you're walking down the street. Yeah. Look around. And they're, and they're designed to just make you fall yeah. asleep. Yeah. Yeah, well, you I did an episode, a whole episode. I did a guy did uh, designer fake, if that is your real name. Um, I did an episode, uh, which is a guided sleep meditation with a few... I don't know Jokes. I could fall asleep because I'm sure you couldn't resist. You couldn't resist. Of course I can't. I could, of course I couldn't resist. Couldn't resist making some jokes. Yeah, there's loads of And stupid... the whole point about those meditations, they're very boring. Yeah, that's the idea. So the meditation thing, I'm like, te- you know, talking you down into a you know, meditative state. And then a pun And all that pops stuff, up. lots of <laughs> stupid jokes. And then he goes with his Scottish voice. Hey, you bastard! <laughs> Good luck sleeping, asshole! <laughs> And then we got all the way through to where they're definitely asleep. And then I start reading them just grammar uh, descriptions (laughs) from Wikipedia about, you know, reduced relative clauses. And so that, you know, if my guided sleep meditation didn't work, this stuff about relative clauses is definitely going to make you fall asleep. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, Listeners, that's the end. Uh, Amber, Paul, thank you so much for talking to uh, everyone on the podcast. Yeah, it's fun. It's been lots of fun. We should do this again sometime. Yeah. Shouldn't we? Where... um when you say you got comments, right? Website. It's on the website. Yeah. But I always feel like, 
I don't know what's changed, but it feels like there's not very many comments anymore on the website. There are still comments, but they're not as many as there were, well, when, when was it, two, three years ago? The comments section went completely bonkers. Yeah, you'd, like and I it, would always enjoy after the episode came yeah. out, I'd wait like a day yeah. and then see all the comments and read everyone's comments. And now when mm. I do that, there's Fewer maybe comments. five or six comments. I don't know what happened. I don't know, what, I don't know what it was, you know, why that happened. YouTube? Uh, Facebook even? No? You don't really? No, I put them on Facebook. I put them on Twitter. I put them on YouTube. They get comments on all those places. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't know, really, basically, Paul. But anyway, we should do this again sometime. Uh, very lovely to have you on the podcast. We've got to stop. Amber just did a clock uh, mime. With I've her. got to go and pick up my Amber, stuff from Don't forget, school. Amber studied mime at university for two years. <laughs> that really came in handy. She did the mime gesture with her finger. So that means that it's time to wind this up, listeners. Uh, okay, Amber Pulse, would you like to say goodbye to the people of the world? Yeah, yeah. thanks uh, for listening. Thanks for having us, Luke. And uh, we'll see you again. Uh, we'll see you very probably, soon. Probably uh, when Amber's got another baby. Yep. Yep, all right then. Nice one. Cheers. All right, bye. Bye bye. So there you go. That was the Lion Game again. What did you think? Did you manage to guess correctly? Or were you completely wrong? Uh, Leave your comments, uh, questions and other things in the comments section. Uh, I'd love to get your responses. I think you heard Paul there. We did, didn't we? We talked about the comments section a little bit. He mentioned that he noticed that uh, fewer comments had um, been arriving compared to maybe just a couple of years ago. And uh, I think part of that is because I started to develop this sort of Uh, comment section community the comment section crew and they were doing loads and loads of talking they're kind of there's still quite a few people uh, messaging each other every day but there used to be a time when there was like loads of conversation going on in the comment section a lot of those people shifted to like a skype group i think and so that's where sort of a lot of the conversation went but um i still get regular comments on the website the website is the best place to leave comments and it's just great to receive comments on episodes, to to read what the listeners are thinking, uh, in some cases to reply and have little conversations and things like that. So it's for me, it's a great addition to an episode when listeners start providing comments. And in the past, I've had comments, you know, obviously with opinions and stuff like that about what's happened in the episode, but also comments with bits of English in there that people have noticed, like chunks of vocabulary and stuff that people have noticed that they're sort of listening. So it's always good to get in the comment section. Just leave your thoughts or maybe some stuff that you've learned from the episode. And it's just a good way to continue to build the community of listeners who uh, can kind of communicate with each other and me on the website in the comments section. Um, I don't really have that much to add here, except that uh, so premium Lepsters will know that I've been uploading episodes of premium number 20 which is a kind of grammar in-depth grammar look at the use of articles those are those tricky little words that uh, seem to be so simple but in actual practice can be very difficult and i've been kind of going through all the rules and attempting to summarizing summarize it in the most kind of clear way possible and also using extracts from interviews with the beatles so we've been kind of using the english of the beatles to learn about articles as well uh, and all the pronunciation drills and stuff to get access to that and all of the other premium content just go to teacherluke.co.uk slash premium and all the details should be there okay so that's all i'm going to say now at the end of this episode thank you so much for listening i look forward to reading your comments but for now it's just time to say goodbye bye 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 Thanks for listening to Luke's English Podcast. For more information, visit teacherluke.co.uk.